Philippines, especially offensively. I think it was two teams, you know, competing really hard, uh, defending, making everything uh, everything tough out there. But, you know, I like to say uh, it's an ugly baby, but it's our baby, you know, at least found a way to win. And so we're happy for that. But, uh, you know, again, just gutsy win. Uh, defending, uh, you know, again, they've got a great team, a lot of talent and, uh, you know, Kelly, Deja Kelly was obviously having a great game and luckily uh, in the fourth period slowed down a little bit. Uh, defensively, our kids did a good job. So, but, uh, you know, again, uh, you got to protect serve at home and against a really good team, uh, we were able to do that. And again, just a gutsy effort. It wasn't pretty. We didn't shoot the ball well. Uh, I feel like I didn't help them enough offensively out there, but they found a way to get it done. West defensively, like you were just talking about, uh, well, I think they came up in feeling their last seven possessions, didn't score the last 345. <clears throat> that wasn't easier for you guys, but you guys yeah. were in front, so you were protecting yeah. the lead. Yeah. Kind of what did you like about the way your team sort of responded to that, protecting the lead? Yeah, I mean, again, we had, we'd had a stretch there when they made a run and actually took the lead where we had given up some threes to – you know, to people that we knew could shoot it well. And, uh, you know, when you have somebody dig on the post and give up an open three or somebody choose between a shooter and a non-shooter to guard the non-shooter and give up a three, uh, those are tough. And I thought the last, you know, four minutes, uh, we cleaned some of that stuff up and did a much better job of matching up and, and getting to the shooters. And um, like I said, again, just competing. I think we held them. You know, for them, they went and I, I like to look at rebounds you went and got. They went and got, you know, looks like three or four rebound, offensive rebounds. Uh, that's a great effort against them because they're a really good offensive rebounding team. What I'd also ask you about is Zaya. She, she was on the bench immediately in the game. Well, she got two fouls. You're yeah. right. Yeah. And, but it and, and only scored one basket going into the fourth quarter, but she ended up with eight points in the fourth at, at key yeah. moments. Yeah. How did you like the way she responded? Yeah. I mean, points? again, I'm proud of her for keeping her confidence. You know, she's uh, probably, you know, in the past, she maybe hang her head a little bit and get down. And uh, tonight I thought she stayed up, stayed pretty involved and engaged on the bench. And when she went back in there, uh, she was able to make a you know a couple of big plays for us. So you know she obviously didn't shoot the ball well. None of us did from three point line, but uh, except for Mimi, Mimi hit a couple of big threes for us. But um, again, one of those nights you don't shoot well, <clears throat> you got to win with defense and rebounding, and uh, they found a way to do that. You mentioned the offense. It felt like there were times when the team you know, settled for some mid-range jumpers instead of kind of, you know, yeah. trying to drive or kick it back out. Um, I thought we stood know. around. We stood around too much, you know. Uh, in, in a four-out offense, yeah, you're four around one and you're spreading them out, but you got to get some movement, you know. And we had a bad habit of passing it and just standing. And the defense, you know, they can guard that real easily. we got to get some movement, maybe set some picks away. Uh, and then look to attack those gaps and keep testing them. You know, that's what you want to do in four out. You want to spread the floor out, keep testing the gaps, try to draw a second defender. Uh, but again, it's also tough when you shoot, what, three for 16 from three, because when you do get somebody to help and you kick it and it doesn't go in, your offense looks really bad. So, uh, but again, I feel like, you know, I, I, I don't want to call as many offensive sets as I do. I'd rather – you know, us be able to come down and just play basketball, and I thought we kind of got away from that. So, um, got a couple of days. We got a great team coming in Monday night, also, and uh, we got a couple of days to try to look at the film, try to clean this stuff up in a hurry because uh, Louisville's going to be another tough test. Isaiah gets, uh, you can go. You're good. When Isaiah gets in foul trouble like that, how crucial is it to have an elite? Freshman like Zoe Brooks able to? Yeah, you know, Zoe played really well in the first half, and you know, Zoe offense. She's a freshman. Offensively, she played really well tonight. It was just a couple of breakdowns defensively that, you know, causes me to maybe go with a veteran group. And that's tough, you know. Uh, uh, Lacey Steele's been playing great for us, hitting some big shots. She gave up offensive rebound. Zoe tried to help on the post and gave up a wide open three to a great shooter. Those are the things. And again, I know the veterans probably do it too, but they probably got a longer leash. When you're a freshman, you know, uh, it's tough because, again, just it's a different game. You know, uh, let's face it, Zoe went out and scored 35 a night in high school. It uh, didn't matter what she did on the other end. So, um, again, she's learning. 
again, gave us a big lift tonight when we needed it uh, with his eye in foul trouble. So, and I thought Maddie Cox had a better game tonight too. She's, uh, you know, been a little bit of slump, been a little bit down. I thought she went in, got a big and one, went to the hole strong, got a couple of defensive rebounds, which again, you know, Utsby and uh, I, I don't know how to spell it, Kadeen, Kadeen, uh, how to say it, but, you know, both of them are great offensive rebounders, and for the most part, uh, we did a pretty good job trying to limit those. Coach, this is the most amount of points you guys had in a win this season. Obviously, you'd like to score every single time you go, but that's not realistic. But I think, what does it show for you guys uh, in order, to, you know, not winning when you make every single shot, the different ways that this team can win basketball game? This is what we talk about all the time, and we hit it right here. We say hold the team to 60 or less, we're going to win, even on a bad night. And when you get an NCAA tournament, you got to win on a bad night. You're going to have one. I mean, you got to win, what, four games to get to the Final Four against really good teams. You're going to have a bad night. You go to the ACC tournament, you got to win three or four in a row. On a bad night, you got to find a way to win. And that, like I said, that's why I'm proud of this team, defending and rebounding. Uh, they did a pretty good job, and to hold a really talented team over there uh, to 59 is, is, you know, big time. That's what we need. But, again, hopefully we don't have to test it again like that. But, yeah, I thought early in the game we were running, and we were getting some transition points. Uh, and then, again, you got to understand, the fourth quarter we had a lead. The whole time it seemed like I had a three- or four-point lead. You're trying to, you know, eat a little bit of clock. Uh, but you got to still score, and and uh, we kind of, like I said, struggled to do that down the stretch. Wes, coming out of the half, you and had a really strong third quarter, kind of putting yourself back in. What was your message to the team before to kind of turn the tides of that, get the defense back on third? At the half? Uh, coming out after the third. After the third? Well, I don't know. We only scored 14 points, so it must not have been a very good one. But uh, you're right. I mean, they won the third quarter by six points. We had like an eight-point lead at halftime maybe, something like that. And uh, so, again – um, you know, we always talk about start the third quarter. You got to come out and set the tone. And uh, we knew they were going to be great. They also came out in the zone uh, in the third quarter, and that maybe slowed us down a little bit. We still got to continue to work on that and get better at attacking the zone. Instead, of, as you mentioned, we did settle for a lot of shots tonight. I thought early in the game we, we settled for a lot of one on one jump shots. So uh, hopefully we can, you know, at least sit down with them by position or whatever and look at some of those things and clean that up. Coach, your current home winning streak started against UNC last year. Um, looking back at where the program was then and kind of where it is now, um, what makes you proud about um, the, the team's development? Between yeah. <clears throat> you know, a year ago, for whatever reason, uh, we just we didn't play as well, maybe together. You know, you had a good core group of veterans back that had been on, some of them had been on three straight ACC championship teams. And then we brought in three McDonald's All-Americans, you know. Uh, and we hadn't had many of those here straight out of high school, and we got three in one summer. So at that point, I really loved the portal. Uh, but, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it didn't, it didn't add up. You look at Carolina men a year ago, they kind of had the same situation maybe. So sometimes it just didn't click right. Uh, this group is really close. Uh, I think for the most part, you know, they, uh, you know, they got their priorities in order and they want to win games and they want their teammates to do well and play well. And, um, you know, they got each other's backs and uh, it's just a fun group to be around, even though sometimes they probably can't tell I'm having fun. But. What, was the, when they had six consecutive possessions with a three-point deficit, you kept getting stops. Take me through what was happening during that stretch. <laughs> well, we were really stressing, don't give up a three. <laughs> and uh, maybe they were looking for that. I'm not sure. But, you know, especially uh, the last minute or two, you know, we were really putting a priority on, you know, let's make sure everyone's guarding the three-point line. So don't, you know, we didn't need anybody sagging in the paint, uh, even if their player was not really a – a really good perimeter shooter. Uh, normally we'd sag and help in that situation, but, you know, uh, late in the game like that, we, we really tried to extend our defense and make sure if they picked on the ball, hand it off, we had somebody there to meet them when they came off of it. Uh, Two-parter on Sonia Rivers. First of all, it seems like every game, especially the ones you guys win, there's a guard or a wing who gets a high rebound total. And it was her tonight. What is it? Is that is that common? Is it something about your team or is that – 
Well, again, Sanaya's, you know, special talent. You know, she can go get rebounds. She can make plays on defense, get steals. And uh, you're right. Uh, you know, in that situation, uh, you know, she – Obviously led us in total rebounds, but the big one there, she went and got seven defensive boards. And uh, we, like I said, that's that's a big key to this game. Uh, you know, for Utsby, again, she's the best, maybe the best rebounder in the league. I think she's leading ACC in total rebounds. So uh, to try to keep her off the glass, she got 11 boards, but only one of them was offensive. So, um, but yeah, we need, you know, if the post, we really stress for the post players to try to keep their, players off the glass because they're such great offensive rebounders. If you do that, that really allows the guard to go in there and, and clean up the mess. You know, if everybody does a good job bodying up, getting the box out, a guard can go in there and and uh, clean up what's left. And uh, Sanai did a great job of that tonight. In the second part, sir, she had one foul. They fouled her six times. So that tells me again, they had a hard time dealing with her. She was getting winning off the dribble. Right. Uh, and you also, you mentioned uh, moving the team around, the double screen for Hayes, the one three-pointer she hit, that was late, that was a big shot. She sort of directed the offense. Is she starting yeah. to become a leader? Is she starting to become the player? Well, yeah, I think she's been a leader all year, definitely. And uh, you're talking about Sanaya? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's been a leader for us all year. And, you know, uh, she's worked hard in the summer and in the off season, and, and still coming in extra. And, you know, you need your best players to be your leaders. You know, you can talk all you want about this or that, but you need your best players to set a great example, get there early, you know, put in the extra shots, put in the extra time, and then do the little things out there on the court um, so that you can then hold other people accountable. Coach, after um, last game, you called for the fans to come in here and be loud. Just how happy were you with them? Yeah, I mean, our crowd's always great, you know, and, you know, I know the quote or whatever, uh, you know, that was tongue in cheek laughing when I said it, but when you see it on paper, you don't see the laugh or the tongue in cheek. So, uh, again, you know, I apologize for that. I was just making a joke. You know, my wife's been mad at me for 42 years for making jokes and sarcasm. So I got a technical one time for sarcasm. She said, if I'd have known that, I'd teed you up 20 years ago. So, uh, yeah. So sometimes I need just to uh, make sure everybody understands I'm kidding. Okay, we can do one more coach so we can get the players in. Um, anybody else need anything? Okay. Y'all good? All, all right. Appreciate you Thank you all. Appreciate y'all being here. I expect to see – I'm taking a picture of this group. I asked the last three minutes and 45 seconds with a lead. Les was pretty complimentary the way you guys defended. Kind of what was your takeaway to win a game like this when the shots aren't going down and you had to grind it out at the end like you did? Walk in. Um, defense is everything to us, um, and we're also very player-led, so we were just talking in timeouts. No matter what, we're up, so we were up, and our main focus was to just get stops and focus on that, and if the ball went in at the end of the shot clock, then it went in, but our main focus was defending and not letting them score and go on their run. Yeah, to add on that, I'm a big believer that defense wins ball games. Uh, so whether we're scoring or not, we know that we trust that um, our defense, like Mimi mentioned, can win us a game. And I feel like it definitely won us that one because, like you said, we, we couldn't really get the ball to go in for us at the end. So, <clears throat> so now I come into this game, you had back-to-back games with seven steals. I believe you had two tonight, but um, you know, your defense was very key in those last few minutes. How would you assess your um, defensive performance? Defensive uh, player to ear. <laughs> I mean, just like, appreciate it. <laughs> but um, I think – that now that teams are seeing that I can get in those passing lanes, they're a little more passive. So I tried to get in the passing lane tonight, but I couldn't really get it. You know, they were uh, meeting those passes. But uh, just keeping my man in front of me, I think I did a pretty solid job. Um, I'm not sure if I had any fouls, maybe one, but it just shows that I can move my feet without having to foul. Uh, I know I can't foul too much. I got to stay on the floor. But um, then gets the seven steals, but two steals is enough. And I think I had a pretty solid game defensively. So. Can either of you uh, speak on the intensity of this game on like every single possession and you know, how it felt out there compared to other games maybe you've had this year in your career, especially on this stage? Um, I think it's just a great rival. Um, you can see the history here um, throughout each team. They're both um, us and North Carolina were such great teams. Um, so it was going to be a battle. We knew that coming in. Um, and just like knowing that it's rival, we Rivalry week, sorry. Yeah. Um, but um, just understanding that and just understanding the battle um, between the two is just, uh, I think, is a great thing. And I think we were ready for it as a team. 
Yeah. Those rival games, you, you have to have energy, um, especially at home. The crowd is bringing the energy. You know, we're lit, we're excited, and they're coming in feeling the same thing. You know, they want to take, you know, um, they want to win a game on our home floor. Um, it looks like I played, I didn't even realize I played the whole game. No wonder I was so tired. But, uh, <laughs> but it's hard bringing the energy for 40 minutes, but that's why you have teammates uh, to pick you up and to do things so that you don't have to do it by yourself. And I love them for that and appreciate them. So. Mimi, given that rivalry atmosphere, how cool was it to hit that three going into the half? Oh, it was amazing. Um, I think I went crazy because both of my parents stood up. So, like, I don't know if y'all see the camera. Like, I see my parents directly. So, um, just having my parents here and just having – being in this atmosphere, um, we have great fans. Wolfpack Nation is everything and more to us. Um, what they did tonight was phenomenal. We can't thank them enough for everything, but – with that energy and just hearing that crowd when the ball just goes through the net is amazing. And then just having my parents there was, you know, the icing on the cake for that. For either of you in that final three, four minute stretch, you know, no baskets are going in, but it's so intense back and forth, fouls going over. What is just going through your guys' minds is that as you try to walk in and just almost grind it out to the end? Uh, I'll say as a leader and point guard of this team, you have to know when to calm it down. Uh, their job is to speed us up defensively. Obviously, they're down trying to get some points scored, but we have we can't let them speed us up in moments like that. And I think we stay composed. I think um, we did a pretty solid job in the end um, just containing. We knew that we didn't have the score because we had the lead. So I think that's just a big part of it. Sinai, there was a moment um, in the last minute of the game where mm -hmm. Crucial moment where you get that tie up with Upspeed yeah. to force the jump ball. Mm -hmm. As soon as the ref signals for that, Mimi is like in your face, hyping you up, screaming. Um, what's it like to have a, I mean, a teammate like that? that oh my that God. <laughs> you know, you know give you that in that moment. it's actually crazy you mentioned that. So, um, our videography team put together a video, a hype video of us before the game. So we watched it and like Mimi was just lit the whole video. And I was just like, I was like, Mimi, like you're such an entertaining person to watch. You know, she can score, she can make big plays. But you know, after she gets a block or whatever, like y'all see, y'all seen it, you know, she's just lit. So when Mimi gets me lit and she's all in my face, it just makes me feel good. Cause it's just like me, I brush it off. Like, yeah, I got a tie up, but Mimi's running over me. I'm like, oh yeah, like, yeah, I, I did it. But so it's, it's great having her. Uh, she's a great teammate. She's She's a great friend, so I'm sad that this is our one and Don't only. Don't start. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a cry too. Yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a water bucket. So we're gonna we're gonna move on. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna move on. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the second last possession of the half, um, but right before your three, um, you saved the ball and you found me cutting to the basket. Yes. Mm -hmm. What happened on that play? Like, what are the clues? <laughs> I was glad she was there, but you know, I did a spin, try to get a layup. I think I got fouled a little bit, but it's okay. Uh, I think somebody tipped it out to me. I grabbed it. I saw Mimi and just she, Mimi's always there when I need her. So she that was a big play for her. I was uh, tired. I ain't gonna lie to you. I did not want to run, but I saw how wide open I was. But then like, cause Maddie Cox just when she tipped it to Sanaya, she ran out of bounds and took us being all them. I said, "Ooh, I got a wide open lane." Yeah. So I just took it. It's crazy. I was gonna do another layup, but I saw her cutting right there, so I didn't even need to. It's perfect. Mimi, you scored double digits the past five games. What's been going right through your game offensively? Um, I would say consistency and um, confidence. Mm -hmm. um, just being the senior and being the leader, um, just trying to step up in those ways. But like, um, like we were talking about a couple questions before, this is my last rodeo. Um, so I just want to make the most of it and soak it in. Um, so I just, I think the older part of me, like the preparation and everything, just being that vet, I think that mindset shifted a lot for me. Because, you know, when you're young and you're like, oh, I got another year, I could do this, 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 and grow. And it's like when being the super senior, it's like, nah, your two months is coming up. So I just want to make the most of it and just try to do what's best. And I just have great teammates. Um, they set me up perfectly, perfectly, and I can't thank them enough for everything they've done for me. Two months. Um, One and a half, but who's counting? Sorry. <laughs> Ma'am, uh, you mentioned being in control as a point guard. Yeah. Uh, the play that stood out to me was you barking to your teammates. Hayes comes off, I think it was a double screen, yeah. the three-pointer. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to me you, like you said, you kind of know one where think this isn't it. You got to move. You got to do this. You're getting comfortable in that role as a point guard. I know you don't always want to be on the ball, yeah. but it seems like you're getting comfortable. Where's your level of comfort in 
it, it's very high right now. Um, a year ago, two years ago, like I was not in this position. Like if somebody wasn't in their spot, it was just it was just so well. I wasn't gonna make them do it. But now it's just like I knew Madison was gonna get that shot if she went off that double stagger. So I'm like I'm just like go. And then as soon as she goes, I hit her and she made my job a whole lot easier. But I don't like yelling at people. You know I'm a very calm, monotone person if y'all can tell. But when it comes to crutch time and I have to get my teammates and order or whatever and I just do what I gotta do. So. I told her to do it. Yeah. I'd be like, you got the ball in your hands ninety nine percent of the times I say you need to do it. And I said mm -hmm. and plus we have so much faith and trust in her. That's why I'd be telling her to go get the ball. I'd be like, this ain't it and with us being so locked in, it's just like she listens to me but I also listen to her and we, yeah. we get the you know what I'm saying, she's the head of the sake, so and we have full amount of trust and faith in her and obviously she got the job done and she got us in order. Question to you, ma'am. Uh, the Maddie Cox minutes. How vital were they? Amazing. Wow. I love her so much. That's my. I know a lot of people say in the lead, that's like your little rook, but like that's like my true little sister. Um, yeah. From the jump, she always wanted to work out with me um, and just follow me. It helped me become a better leader, and she kept me on my toes because she was following me and trying to figure out what I was doing. But what she's done, her effort, her ability, her talent, um, once I'm gone, she's. She's up next, and she's doing an amazing job, and she's just showing y'all what she's going to do next year for you guys in the three years to come. She hasn't even scratched the surface No, nah, for she real. Is. If y'all just watch a practice, oh my goodness. she be hooping. If you just see that one, that <laughs> that one, one layup, layup she did, did. Like, that was just... like that one layup y'all saw, I'm just oh telling y'all, that's in practice, but like she jumps ten times higher with that. So ten she be times. dunking on people low-key, but we're going to keep that little secret yeah. in practice. How do you get when someone who works that hard does something special? It's amazing. I be, because it's like for me when I was at the five, it was just like telling her she's okay. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like retelling her the scout, everything. And she watches a ton of film. She's up on every scout. She watches film a lot. So you could just tell how much she's into the game. Mm -hmm. um, we speak a lot about it. So it's just giving her that confidence to tell her that she's fine. Like she's in this moment. It's just, because you know, a lot of freshmen, they get a lot of speed up. But um, I just think she's done a great job. And I'm just like, it's okay. Just breathe. You're mm -hmm. fine. And I said, you know the scouting report. You know what to do. And I said, mm -hmm. go make a play and believe me yourself. And mm -hmm. she knocked down all her free throws, which that was something that was on her mind. And I was glad to um, just chest bump her and just say, hey, you made all your free throws. You 100%. And she's like, whew. So, yeah, it's just it's <laughs> yep. a good thing for her. For sure. What's the best thing you, you two have learned from each other <laughs> playing together? Ooh, That's a good this wow. this has been rocking since a while. A I mean. Time. Yeah. She tried to get me to play with her in Maryland. Yeah. So like we was we was already plotting this. Like yeah. we knew. We but knew. I called her when I left. I said, yo, yep. I said, I ain't gonna lie, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Don't go there. But hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, but this has been like we've been locked in since um we first met and it's just knowing each other on and off the court. Um we're roommates as well. So it's just twenty four seven. We see each other all the time and just knowing how much of an amazing person she is and we just bounce off each other. I think I've learned to be become like a dog. Like I I was quiet last year, like I didn't I didn't do too much and now that we're both playing more like important minutes, it's just like I have to be a dog because she's gonna yell at me if I'm not. So, you know, we spent a lot of time together. We've come closer on and off the court. So I wish her the best and I know she wishes the same for me. So you got anything else for the players? You all have been through this stretch of the ACC calendar before. Um, now you have to take this intense game and turn it around and do the same thing in four days. Yeah. Well, what's the key from now until Louisville um, to make sure you can replicate that intensity? Recovery and being locked in. Because um, this is going to be just like the stretch for March Madness. Um, just understanding that, like I said, we are player led. So just understanding how much recovery and film is going to matter um, and just staying locked in and just taking care of our bodies and hoping. You know, no injuries. So yeah, yeah. I said I, I'm, I'll pick it back on that. Like we we can enjoy the win now. We got a day off to recover, uh, do what we need to do. But when it comes to Saturday, we got to lock in and learn this new team. Like she said, lock in on film, and we'll be ready when Monday comes. So yeah. All right, I'm yeah. Thank you. Ladies, Appreciate y'all. Thank, Thank you, ladies. Thanks, y'all. Who was past my bedtime?